The Gina and Maddie podcast. Well, let's let's do a revised version right now of the news that Suze didn't use. That's what we normally do. I've got some stories here that we'll pump through. Uh, British dressage star, so that's the equestrian at uh, yes. the Paris Games, Charlotte de Jardin, has withdrawn from the Paris Games after a video emerged showing her making an error of judgment yes. during a coaching session. Uh, the three-time Olympian and the most decorated British female Olympian mm. of all time has withdrawn from the competition while authorities investigate the incident. Now, the video circulated yesterday appears to show her hitting the horse on the legs during a slow-motion trot. Oh. A video, yeah, so it's from four years ago. She said, it shows me making an error of judgment during a coaching session, she said. And also withdrawing from the Games is Shoko Miyata. She is the captain of Japanese women's gymnastics team. She broke the team's code of conduct oh. by having a durry. She's just oh. there having a Winnie Blue and having a Midori illusion shaker, drinking oh. alcohol and smoking, and it's a ban from her, so she's been sent home, not allowed to compete. Oh, no. I know. Just while we're on Paris as well, we were talking about it the other day. Who is going to perform? At the opening yeah, ceremony. Yeah, who? Have like, you found so, out? Wow. Well, You've done the deep dive. I've uh, put my investigative journalism hat on. Yeah. And I have found out that... It's all coming back, it's all coming back to me now. Celine Dion is reportedly getting paid $2 million to perform during oh, no Friday's way. Paris <gasps> Games opening ceremony. She was spotted checking into the Royal Moncure Hotel in Paris. <laughs> and a source Penthouse, confirmed probably. that... Oh, yeah, oh, the presidential <laughs> suite. Yeah, for, yeah. Uh, only the best for Celine. And another wow, source on the ground. that would be so good. I've got some... I hope she's okay, though. She hasn't been well. No, nah, she's got the stiff person yeah, syndrome. Still, yeah. Surely there's a better name for that. But... If she's there performing, she must be doing okay. Yeah. But one song. If you're going to pick one song from Celine. Which one would you pick? Oh, boy. But I do have someone else on the ground in Paris. Uh, my mate, Ben, who is uh, hosting and emceeing the beach volleyball. Oh. And they're hosting the beach volleyball underneath the Eiffel Tower. It is the most incredible. He sent me some photos last night on WhatsApp. What? So he's on the microphone doing the ground announcing in English. And then... Someone will translate what he says into French, which is incredible. That but is amazing. Lady Gaga has been seen in <gasps> Paris as well. So there is talk that she oh, is going to be performing. Did he at the see her? Uh, I think he heard, like, it, you know, just got whispers yeah. went around the village. French whispers. French whispers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, they're the whispers that we're doing the rounds. And quickly, I can't I can't not do this story because I wrote some jokes for it. Uh, <laughs> Gina, hold yeah. on to your hat. Because I'm holding. Yeah, you ready? Sharks living off the coast of Brazil have tested positive for cocaine, according to new research. The first time that the drug has been detected in the free-ranging sharks. Seriously, how can they afford it? What do sharks earn these days? Anyway, stand by for a new Netflix series, Sharkos. Hey! Oh, there's more. Hold on. Scientists tested three Brazilian sharp-nosed sharks in the waters off the city of Rio de Janeiro and found cocaine present in both their liver and muscle tissue of all 13 specimens, according to a paper by researchers at the Oswaldo Cruz Foundation in Brazil that was sent to CNN yesterday. Well, that, were the sharks acting suspiciously? Because why would you randomly... Test a shark. Oh, well, that's exactly right. Leave the sharks alone. Let's yeah. try to have a good time. Uh, <laughs> authorities are on the hunt for the kingpin, uh, a sea snail by the name of Pablo Escargo. Thank you very much. Gina and Maddie. This time all week I've been taking you on a little bit of a road to Paris, uh, highlighting some of the sports that don't always get, you know, the glory, the yes. attention that some yeah. of the more high-profile sports get. Uh, I am pressed for time, so I'm going to power through this one just quickly. And speaking of power, I'm talking weightlifting. Uh, the Australian weightlifting team for Paris consists of three 24-year-old debutantes, one-time Wallaby hopeful Kyle Bruce. He's oh. going to be competing in the 89-kilo category. Jacqueline Michel, uh, she'll be competing for Australia in the women's 71-kilo class. And our medal hopeful, this is where the... The chance of getting something on the podium uh, in Paris in the weightlifting for Australia sits with uh, Eileen Sikamatana. Now, Eileen created history in 2022 as the first woman in Commonwealth Games history to win gold for two different countries, Fiji in 2018 and then Australia in 2022. She's representing Australia this year in Paris. It's the first Olympic she's going to. And I just want to touch on this because when I was reading up on Eileen's story, I was like, this could be a movie. 
This could really? be a movie. An 11 year old girl growing up on a farm in tropical Fiji, she used to cart 50 kilo bags of animal feed from her dad's truck and then lug them to the storage if they were pillows made of feather. So light as an 11 year old. 50 kilo wow. bags. Then she was encouraged by a school teacher to take up weightlifting. Then she teams up with a legendary coach from Australia who had relocated to the South Pacific with a plan to turn the territory into a weightlifting powerhouse and through the combination of her incredible strength, she conquers the world by throwing around some plates and lifting heavy oh, metal. Good on her, what a great story. How good is that? So Commonwealth, uh, sorry, the Olympics, that uh, the weightlifting kicks off a little bit later on in the tournament. So we wish all of them good luck, especially Eileen. I hope she brings home some medal, which will be fantastic and Speaking of fantastic. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. My great mates at ASICS have jumped on board with our show, Jana. Yeah. They are the official uniform partner for Paris 2024. And what are they helping us out with? They are, every time Australia takes home gold, listen to this, ASICS are giving you a pair of ASICS Gel Cayano 31 parachutes worth $300. Now, these are the official shoes for the athletes. 100%. They are so good. If you haven't, you should jump on uh, ASICS Australia Instagram and check it out because they are there. The shoes are up there. They look incredible. All you need to do is go to star1045.com.au. Mm-hmm. Click on the win button there. Yeah. You'll see the little icon there for ASICS for gold. And we'll call you back. Yeah. When Australia, and if you do win, you know, if you go for a walk, it'll be interesting to say to people, oh, how much are your shoes? Yeah. I'm <laughs> what an athlete. Shoes are you I'm an athlete. <laughs> Hey, I've just been to Paris. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. So get clicking, star1045.com.au. Gina and Maddie. Totally wild. There's been some great animal news lately. So on today's, this morning's news, fresh <laughs> off the press, Kingsguard horse, Kingsguard's horse bites tourist on the boob. So hard she fainted. <laughs> Sorry. Did you see it? I saw <laughs> the video. <laughs> Imagine being bitten on a boob so hard that you faint. Oh, and f- fainting like fainting is <laughs> not great, right? But like no. whenever I think of fainting, it's like that one kid at school that was in the choir that was standing <laughs> for too long, and everyone said, and then you all of a sudden you hear smack. Like, oh Jesus, Simon's fainted. <laughs> It was funny. And then, old mate, on the video, there's a guy just videoing her. On the just, floor. Yes. <laughs> but, but, but sucked in. You I know what? I get so yeah. annoyed at those people who stand next to the king's horses and the guards. They tell you not to? Yeah, no, no, it sucked in. <laughs> bit on yeah. the boob. Yeah, you boob deserve to get bitten. <laughs> Leave them alone. They're just trying to do a job. That's right. They're serious horses. Get your boozies out of the horse's face. <laughs> In more serious news, okay. Britain's ugliest dog has joined <laughs> Hollywood stars on the red carpet ahead of the release of Deadpool and Wolverine. So Peggy the Pugies, she's a pug and Chinese crested cross, is making her film debut as Dogpool alongside Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. So she, <laughs> she's this um, protagonist, Wade Wilson's canine sidekick, yeah, yeah. apparently. And have so you got a photo she, there? Hang on, let me give you uh, a look. She, oh, Jesus Have you Christ. seen that? <laughs> That is an ugly dog. <laughs> like she's kind of look. She's got no hair, no, but a little bit like, of hair, yeah. and the tongue hanging out. Making bank though, being in a Marvel. And what apparently is it? she was, yeah, in a Marvel movie. In she Marvel was, a, she was a rescue, yeah. and then her owner entered her in London's ugliest, ugliest dog, dog competition. She's, she's cute. got the tongue hanging she's got out the, the side that never goes in. And, the, and HMV have replaced the traditional dog and gramophone logo with her, with Peggy. Oh, just that's for amazing. For now, I saw she's the um, star. Saw all those shots rolling around yesterday on the socials and on the telly of the premiere where. Blake Lively went dressed in like this leather uh, Deadpool dress and she went with a friend, one of the Hadids, I think it might have been, uh, Gigi Hadid. Someone beautiful. Yeah, so I was just like, <laughs> her name? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, but she was wearing like the Wolverine sort of style leather dress oh, and they wow. went to the premiere together like uh, Deadpool Wolverine. Anyway. It's- <laughs> Press making machine <laughs> that movie. Now speaking of Peggy's, because that little dog's name was Peggy. Mm. Peggy and Molly update, real quick. Yeah. So now who's Peggy and Molly? Peggy and Molly. You remember they are the Staffy and the Magpie who made the news probably a month ago, who became best friends. Oh, and then they took the Magpie they away. They took the Magpie yeah, away, yeah. and then they had to write to the council and the Premier of Queensland got involved. Anyway, the Magpie got given back to the family because apparently they found her as a baby one day. They were going for a mm. walk in the park, and she was her mum had abandoned her. And, and, by law, you're not meant to have native animals as pets. But just she as a... would fly away and then come back. Yeah. She didn't sleep. 
sleep no, in the no, house no. or anything in their defence. Anyway, mm. now they are excited to announce that Zentric Studios are going to bring to life a wholesome, heartwarming, heartwarming animated series about a kind-hearted, animal-loving couple and their beautiful staffy girls, a magpie and their friends. Oh, how good. A kid's thing. It's it's going to be in development for the next year, but it's going to be 11-minute episodes for 5 to 11-year-olds. It's just about kindness. How I nice. love how that. I'll, I'll still watch Bluey. Are you doing the llamas or are we going to save that for another day? No, we have to quickly do that. Okay. Two emotional support llamas have been seen trotting around the airport. Now, I get airport anxiety. It's a thing. I hate the airport. It makes me anxious. I'm worried I'm going to miss the plane. Oh, it's and just... It's stressful. People. Yeah. <laughs> Just well, everywhere. now there's emotional support llamas. llamas. If if you're not not here, not in our that country. was no, in Portland in Portland. the states. I think so. It's should... so weird just seeing a couple of llamas and people going up and hugging them. I, I don't know who, but that might that might add to the trauma for me. A I little think. bit. You got to be spitting me. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's enough. The Gina and Maddie podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.